Today is all about insulin drip or what some refer to as continuous insulin infusion. Watch to the end, I have a lot of tips and tricks about using insulin drip in real life clinical practice. In this video, we will discuss the following. How insulin drip is prepared or mixed, when to use insulin drip in clinical practice, how to initiate or start your insulin drip, how to monitor patients on insulin drip, when and how to transition from continuous insulin therapy or insulin drip to intermittent insulin therapy or basal slash bolus insulin therapy. This is the eighth video of the inpatient diabetes management course. A link to the course is provided below. Before we start, remember to sign up using the link below for PDF summaries of this video and future videos on our channel. The summary should be in your inbox 24 hours after the video is released here on the channel. Let's start. Insulin drip is prepared by mixing human regular insulin in normal saline at a one to one ratio, typically by mixing 100 units of regular insulin in 100 cc or mil of normal normal saline which means each cc or mil equal one units of human regular insulin. In real world clinical practice or settings, insulin drip is mostly used in the following situations. DKA and non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia, critically ill patients with hyperglycemia, post-cardiac surgery patients, particularly post-cabbage, difficult to control hyperglycemia in non-critically ill patients. And there is one more indication that's unrelated to diabetes in the treatment of hypertriglyceridemia induced acute pancreatitis. Now, for for DKA and non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia, I will have a separate video dedicated to them soon in the course. Hyperglycemic critically ill patients have a higher mortality rate than normal glycemic patients. That's why it's imperative to achieve and maintain a blood sugar target of 140 to 180 as soon as we can in these patients. And of course, insulin drip is the fastest and most effective way to achieve this target. Some non-critically ill patients who are on the floor may have a difficult to control blood sugar despite multiple adjustments in their regimen. And I've seen this mainly in two subsets of patients, in diabetics who are initiated on steroid therapy for any reason, and in those who take large doses of insulin at home, but for some reason don't remember their home medications and we end up giving them much smaller doses. These patients, I mean both groups of these patients, typically have blood sugar above 300 or above 400 and insulin drip is the quickest way to get their blood sugar under control. Hypertriglyceridemia induced pancreatitis typically develop when the triglyceride level more than a thousand and it's best treated with plasmapheresis. Insulin drips comes next to lower the triglyceride level if plasmapheresis is not available. Now we we decided to start our patient on an insulin drip. How do we do that? To place an order for an insulin drip, it's necessary to furnish the following information. Is an initial bolus required or not? And if yes, how much? What's the initial rate? How many units per hour are we going to start the drip at? And titration guidance. What blood sugar parameters the nurse should follow to go up and down on the drip rate? If your hospital has already set protocols for insulin drips, which most hospitals do, then all you need is to pick your protocol which will have all these info. If there are no such protocols at your facility, one trick that you could use is to search for such protocols online. Luckily, some actually a lot of institutions have their protocols available online so we can download them and use them. The drawback if you decide to do that is that you have to manually enter it into your system as these protocols are not approved by your facility. Anyhow, it's not too hard to run an insulin drip and let me guide you through this the first thing we need to know what's the indication for insulin drip are we treating dka and non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia or not the main goal in dka is to get blood sugar under control and the anion gap to close and in non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia to get blood blood sugar under control and the patient encephalopathy and mental status improved in both cases we start with an initial insulin bolus of 0.1 unit per kg then initiate the drip at 0.1 unit per kg per hour. Let's take an example here. A 70 kilo lady, that's her weight, with type 2 diabetes was admitted to the IC with septic shock secondary to UTI and DKA. Her initial blood sugar was 400 and potassium at 3. The patient is making adequate amount of urine. She received 3 liters of lactated ringer and currently on 200 cc per hour of LR. Now the way we approach this, this patient needs an initial bolus which is going to be 0.1 mm -hmm. times 70 kilo which means 7 units of IV regular insulin 
and the drip should be started at mm -hmm. seven units an hour, which is 70 multiplied by 0.1, right? So that's seven units an hour. So you give seven units bolus, then start the drip at seven units an hour. Now, some patients may not require an initial bolus, especially mm -hmm. if blood sugar is less than 250. After initiating the drip, our aim is to reduce blood sugar level by mm -hmm. 50 to 100 milligram per deciliter within the first hour. If this desired drop is not achieved, we recommend doubling the drip rate. Subsequently, after that, our goal is to maintain a consistent mm -hmm. decrease in blood sugar toward our target. Once the blood sugar falls to or below 200, mm -hmm. the rate should be reduced to approximately 0.03 per kg per hour. Remember that a dextrose solution, D5%, should be added mm -hmm. to IV fluid once the blood sugar falls to or less than 200 in DKA and 300 in non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia. In normoglycemic DKA, which can be associated, can happen mm -hmm. from SGL2, sodium glucose, co-transporter 2 inhibitors, we start the drip at 0.05 to 0.1 units per kg per hour without an initial bolus. A 70 kilo patients will be started at 3 to 7 units an hour and dextrose solution is started at the same time as we initiating the insulin drip to avoid hypoglycemia until an in gap is closed. How about the use of insulin drip in indications other than DKA or non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia? The main goal here of using insulin drip in these patients is to achieve adequate mm -hmm. blood sugar control and achieve the target of 140 to 180. An initial bolus mm -hmm. may not be necessary and the drip rate typically is initiated at 3 to 5 units per hour. Hypertriglyceridemia induced pancreatitis is an exception. No initial bolus mm -hmm. or titration is needed. We use a fixed mm -hmm. rate until the triglyceride level falls below 1000. The rate ranges from 0.1 to 0.3 per kg per hour. Let's say 70 kilo patients develop severe pancreatitis and a triglyceride level of 6000. Insulin drip should be initiated. I will pick the 0.3 which is 0.3 multiplied by 70 that means 20 units an hour so we leave it at 20 units an hour until the triglyceride level falls to less than 1000 Non-diabetics mm. and most diabetics will for sure need a continuous 5% or 10% dextrose uh, solution added to their IV fluid to prevent hypoglycemia. These patients should be given regular food if they can eat, including diabetics. And this is one case where a diabetic patient can eat whatever they want in the hospital. Plasmapheresis mm. remain the first line treatment for this condition if available as insulin drip typically requires two to three days to bring the triglyceride right level less than a thousand. Now, how do we monitor these patients while on insulin drip? All patients on insulin drip should mm -hmm. be admitted or transferred to the ICU or at least intermediate care unit or step down unit if they can carry insulin drips at your facility. While on insulin drip, blood sugar should be checked mm -hmm. every one to two hours. I personally prefer every one hour until the patient's blood sugar is under control and stable for a few hours, then I can switch it to every two hours. Titrate your insulin drip based on blood sugar values following the protocol you are using and you don't need to worry about it once you pick the protocol if no protocol then use your clinical judgment by going up and down roughly by one two and plus three units on the drip rate please hold the insulin drip if the blood sugar is less than mm -hmm. 70 and we hold it for one hour until the hypoglycemia is corrected. And it can be corrected mm -hmm. by giving half an amp of D50 if the blood sugar is still above 40 or a full amp if the blood sugar of D50 if the blood sugar is less than 40. The goal is to bring mm -hmm. the blood sugar above 100 before restarting the drip at a rate lower than the previous one when hypoglycemia happened. BMP should be checked every two to four hours in DKA and non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia. In other indications, BMP can be checked less frequently unless significant electrolyte abnormality exists. Now remember, before initiating the drip, make sure to check a baseline BMP with special attention to potassium. If potassium is less than five, potassium supplements should be given along the, with the initiation of the insulin drip. If less than 3.5, potassium should be corrected before in the initiation of the drip. Now, let me bring back our previous DKA example. The patient potassium was three mil equivalent per liter. So before starting the drip, we should replete her potassium as quickly as possible. And let me guide you on how we do that. 
First, I will give her 40 milliequivalent per liter of KCL IV over one hour, and simultaneously, I will add 20 milliequivalent of KCL to each liter of LR she is receiving. As a side note, I mentioned that urine output is adequate, as I will be nervous, really nervous, to give potassium if the patient is oliguric or anuric, which is something we can discuss when we discuss potassium disorders. I will check the potassium level after the KCL infusion is done, which is in one hour, and repeat this step until potassium is equal or more than 4 milliequivalent per liter. In real world settings, repleting potassium and then checking the level may delay insulin drip initiation. If that's the case at your facility, we can start the drip after starting the potassium infusion and keep checking and repleting potassium every one to two hours until potassium is equal or more than four. Let's move to the transition from insulin drip to basal slash bolus insulin therapy. First, when do we start the transition? As you know, in DK, the transition starts when the anion gap is closed. In non-ketotic hyperismolar hyperglycemia, the transition starts when the patient is encephalopathy has resolved, they are mentally clear, and their blood sugar less than 300. In patients for whom insulin drip is used for blood sugar control, there is no DK or non-ketotic hyperismolar hyperglycemia, the transition is best started when their blood sugar is stable, within the target of 140 to 180. In hypertriglyceridemia induced mm -hmm. pancreatitis, we continue the drip at the fixed rates, as we said, until the triglyceride level falls below 1000. So how do we do the transition itself? Some protocols, not all of them, may have this information and will guide you through the transition process. But this is how we do it in real life practice. First, calculate the total amount of human regular insulin received in the last 24 hours. If we cannot find for some reason the exact amount, a rough estimate can be used by finding the last two or four readings, summing them up and multiplying by 12 if two readings or six if four readings. The next step is the two thirds slash one third rule, which you all probably know. We divide the total amount received in the last 24 hours by three. Two thirds of the amount amount is given as basal insulin and one third as scheduled pre-meal insulin. If the patient is expected to have adequate oral intake, of course. If the patient going to be NPO or the oral intake is poor or unpredictable, we only give the basal insulin after making these calculations. Now, after that, we give the first dose of basal mm -hmm. insulin and order to switch insulin drip one to two hours, preferably two hours after giving the first dose of basal insulin. Once insulin drip is switched off, we start the patient on a diabetic diet, switch blood sugar checks to ACHS before meal and bedtime, start the scheduled pre-meal insulin, and add a correction sliding scale. In DKA and non-ketotic hyperosmolar hyperglycemia, don't forget to switch off any IV dextrose solutions. There is no transition in hypertriglyceridemia induced pancreatitis. Once the triglyceride level drops below 1000, we switch off the drip. If the patient's diabetic, we start them back on the most appropriate therapy, likely basal slash bolus insulin therapy. Now, when picking basal insulin, please avoid picking insulin deglotic or insulin glargy new 300 given their long half-life of up to 40 hours i refer you here to my previous video in the course about different types of insulin so we are left with insulin detimer and insulin glargy new 100 remember that insulin detimer is better given twice daily in such a case the basal the total basal insulin amount should be split between these two doses now let's say the lady that we mentioned previously in the example received 100 units of human regular insulin in the last 24 hours this will be translated into 66 units of basal insulin and 11 units of rapid acting insulin before each meal. We can write the transition order for this patient like this. Please start insulin glargine U166 units sub Q daily at bit time the first dose is to be given now. Please switch off insulin drip two hours after giving insulin glargine. Once the insulin drip is off, please do the following. Switch the blood sugar checks to AC and HS, start diabetic diets, switch off the dextrose solution, start insulin Lispro 11 units three times daily before each meal, or what we may refer to TIDAC. Start a mild intensity correction sliding scale. Again, I refer you to my previous video where I discussed the correction sliding scale in details. Now, if the patient is going to be in PO or oral intake may not be reliable, we omit the scheduled pre-meal insulin. If insulin detimer is to be used instead of glargine, the order will be insulin detimer 33 units sub Q BID. First dose now. In the next video, we will apply what we have learned so far in this course to real world settings clinical examples. Thanks for watching and see you soon.